answering in your chat box yeah so we'll uh, i've just uh, uh, kept around 10 to 12 oskis uh, all varieties one question each just to sensitize the students uh, to stimulate them to read on the subject so before we start i thought i'll just put a trial question so all the students are ready you can show in the chat box with a thumbs up One second. So I will post the question, wait for 20 seconds. I've kept a buzzer here on the screen. So I'll wait for people to respond in the chat box, following which I will display the answer screen. Is that okay? Yeah. So this is a trial question. Who is the youngest Indian cricketer? to score a century on debut in a 50 over ICC one day international. So we have a 20 second timer. So this is just to stimulate your thoughts. So all the OSCEs, MCQs, you should have a different level of thinking. See if there is a twist in the question, something out of the blue. Someone has answered Gil. The answer is Dr. Oh, sorry, Mitali Raj. Because I didn't tell, I tell it's a male cricketing team, boys team or a woman's team. So she is the youngest woman cricketer to score a century on debut at the age of 16 years, when she was 16 years old. So these kind of twists and surprises are bound to happen in uh, when it comes to OSCEs and MCQs. So we have to be prepared for it. So now the first... Uh, uh, question 10 day old neonate with macular rash over the face ecg is shown here what is the ecg interpretation and probable underlying diagnosis how will you confirm the diagnosis how will you prevent this condition so are people responding in the chat box Yeah, so as you can see here, obvious thing there is bradycardia and there is a conduction block. So this is a ECG of complete heart block, neonatal lupus. So how will you confirm the diagnosis? Presence of maternal anti-RO, anti-LA antibodies can be checked. And when it comes to prevention of this condition, we know treatment with IVIG in pregnant women with anti-RO and anti-LA antibodies. So ECGs, you all should be familiar especially typical ECGs like this conduction block, or they can show a ECG of a tricuspid atresia, where you have the left axis deviation. So all these typical ECGs, all the fellows should be familiar. Question number two, what is abnormal in this 28 day old term baby? Define the condition, list two causes for the same. Carefully see the picture. All the participants can answer in the chat box. So what is very striking here in the pic? It is umbilical stump because I said it's a 28 day old baby. So umbilical stump has still not fallen off. It's still intact. So it is basically the delayed separation of umbilical cord and generally defined as presence of umbilical stump for more than three weeks. So causes we know, uh, immunological causes like the leukocyte addition defect. It could be a persistent uracus, uracal abnormalities. Omphalitis ha has to be thought of or a simple thing like umbilical granuloma. So these could be the causes. So these kind of spotters can be put. You have to be very careful in saying what exactly is a uh, abnormality in the picture and then you have to think and answer also looking at the sub questions can give you some clue sometimes as to what the answer could be so next uh, question number three identify the chart 
what does the straight line and the dotted line mean and five points for intensive phototherapy. So participants can answer in the chat box. So, one second, yeah. So, we know this is a Bhutan is our specific Bilribin nomogram and this is the latest version. Fellows should be familiar that there is a 2021-2022 version of the uh, our specific nomograms which are now available. And the straight line here, what you're seeing here, the straight line, three lines you're seeing, it is a newer uh, cutoffs as per the newer uh, uh, 2022 guidelines, whereas the dotted lines are as per the older guidelines. So this is just shown for you to compare the newer 2022 uh, nomograms versus 2004 nomograms. So that is why the straight line and the dotted lines are shown here. So very important for the fellows to know that there is a newer version available. You have to go through the intricacies of that. The sample size is more than 140 times of the previous version. About five points for intensive phototherapy. We are all very familiar. It, the light emission has to be in the blue green spectrum, 460 to 490 nanometers. Irradiance of at least 30 microwatt per centimeter square per nanometer. At least two units, preferably three. And keep the lights as close to the baby as possible. Um, elimination of maximum body surface area should be there. Minimize interruptions and uh, show a decrease in the bill ribbon in the first four to six hours of exposure. And periodically the machines need to be checked with a flux meter. So these are the uh, points for intensive phototherapy. So phototherapy related, all the questions fellows are supposed to be very, very familiar. Next question number four, identify, easy one, list four anomalies associated with this condition. So I think most of you might, might have answered it right. It is prune belly syndrome, which is partial absence of abdominal muscles. And the four anomalies associated with the conditions, very important to know. One is, of course, the renal anomaly, renal dysplasia, cysts, hydronephrosis, cryptorchidism, CTV, and the uracle diverticulum. So these kind of spotters of babies with anomalies can be put, uh, uh, which uh, the fellows need to be very familiar with. Question number five, what is being elicited here? Can you see the video? Age of appearance and disappearance and the significance of it. Yeah, I think most of you have answered gallon, gallon, gallon. All of you have answered. Yes. So it is a gallon reflex or the trunk incurvation reflex. And the age of appearance is 20 weeks in utero and it disappears by three to nine months of life. Best seen in the newborn period and gradually it fades thereafter. So significance, it helps in the birthing process. And if unintegrated, it affects the posture, coordination and the ability to sit still. So fellows can all note down all these points. So all the reflexes, uh, neonatal reflexes, all of you need to be familiar. So this is was something interesting, which we uh, case which we had in our unit. Uh, Preterm, 32 weeks, fully recovered from RDS, was in room air, tolerating feeds, UVC was in C2. On day seven, baby developed an episode of bradycardia desaturation, 
not responding to 30 seconds of effective bag and mask ventilation. Resuscitated after chest compressions and adrenaline and uh, uh, will be recovered within around half an hour, 30 minutes to one hour. Chest X-ray neurosonogram were fine. Ultrasound abdomen showed this. This is a liver. Within the liver, we are seeing these white spots. So describe the UHG image. What is the likely cause for this deterioration? So again, ultrasound images can be uh, kept for the examination. So this is multiple hyperechoic foci in the liver, which is portal venous gas. So most likely because the baby was otherwise tolerating feed and it was a sudden life-threatening episode with air dispersed in the liver. So probably it could be a air embolism through the UVC. So fortunately, baby recovered with effective resuscitation, but uh, this uh, ultrasound really helped us in getting the diagnosis. So these kind of ultrasound images can be definitely kept in the examinations. Next about neonatal physiology transition. So what is the physiology behind this process? The red arrow mark that you are seeing here mention four conditions interfering with this process. So you can see graph here. This is a number of yeah, and pulmonary vascular uh, resistance at birth. What are you seeing in the graph? And what is the red mark that is mentioned uh, with the arrow? So, what is the physiology behind this process? So, it is a basically the normal fall in the pulmonary vascular resistance at birth. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, post lung expansion and increased alveolar O2 pulmonary dilatation and initial rapid fall in the PVR. So four conditions interfering in the process, hypoxia, acidosis, increased pulmonary artery pressure and high pulmonary venous pressure, right? So this is a very, very important graph for practical purposes as well as for examinations. Question number eight, Spot diagnosis for the fellows. What is it? Yes, quite a few have answered right. Harlequin changes. So the Harlequin color change usually occurs when the baby is lying on its side and the background behind it, physiology, pathology behind it also we are supposed to know. The upper half of the body becomes pale and the dependent half turns into deep red color with a sharp midline demarcation between the two, like how we are seeing here. And it reflects the immaturity of the hypothalamic centers responsible for the control of the peripheral vascular tone. So all these kind of skin changes are very, very important. So there is an IAP color atlas. Uh, probably some of the images can be uh, uh, seen in the atlas for, uh, I mean, uh, OSCE purposes. Next question number nine. Term AGA, female baby with perinatal asphyxia, referred to you at four hours of life. One episode of seizure. Cord ABG 6.8, base deficit minus 24. Baby has phenotypic features of down syndrome. So now question is, what are the absolute contraindications for therapeutic hypothermia? Name two newer drugs for HI and their ongoing trials. So the we should understand Down syndrome is not an absolute contraindication. Major congenital anomalies like a complex EHT, major CNS anomaly, lethal chromosomal abnormality like trisomy 13 and 18 is an absolute contraindication. And uh, babies with significant bleeding diathesis and major intracranial hemorrhage. So only these would be the absolute contraindications. And newer drugs, uh, we know erythropoietin, melatonin and allopurinol have been 
tried. So you should know the names of the trials and go through the details of it too. So next question number 10. Term female baby born to uh, primary gravida required resuscitation, severe respiratory distress. So you can see the image here. And this is x-ray with the specific points which are marked here on the x-ray. So what is the most likely diagnosis? What is the most common gene mutation in this condition? So no one is attempting this. Someone has written his name. Only one has written Juven syndrome. Yes, so it is Juven syndrome or what we call under the broader umbrella of asphyxiating thoracic dystrophy, ATD spectrum. So you can see here a very narrow uh, rib cage and even in the photograph it is seen and flat ribs. Okay, these are the classical findings in a Juven syndrome. So DYNCH21 on chromosome level, it is a most common genetic mutation seen in Juven syndrome. Do we have another five to 10 minutes more? I have another uh, two or three questions. Is it okay? Yeah, yeah, please go on. Yeah. So again, uh, something on metabolic disorders, the fellows need to be familiar. So uh, again, all these photos and the cases are from our own cases that we had in our unit, which I, I am posting here. So uh, we had a, a male baby cried at birth, uh, discharged within uh, 24 hours. Baby presented on day two of life with reduced activity, poor feeding and hiccups. Uh, seizures noted at admission. Uh, this was outborn baby, came to us after 24 hours of life and baby was encephalopathic, sepsis screen negative, electrolytes and ABG normal. So the uh, characteristic finding was that baby has hiccups. So what is the most likely diagnosis? Enough clues I've given. And what is the investigation of choice? So some of the metabolic conditions which will mimic HI. So many times classical teaching is any seizure within 24 hours of life, unless proved otherwise it is HI. But there are few metabolic conditions. So one of them being the NKH or the hyperglycinemia, uh, which uh, presents with uh, seizures, encephalopathy, and the characteristic finding is the hiccups in the baby. So in this particular baby, we had done the CSF glycine, which was very high. And the plasma glycine uh, ratio is very, very important. Of course, we went uh, uh, with the exome sequencing, which confirmed the diagnosis. Baby didn't make it. Uh, at least the genetic diagnosis will help the family in the subsequent pregnancy. So metabolic disorders, uh, fellows need to be very, very familiar. Which one will have uh, ammonia raised? Which will have metabolic acidosis? And uh, urea cycle disorders, how do they present? When does the lactate increase? So all these mechanisms, uh, it's very important to be very familiar. So this is question number 12. NSG of a baby four weeks old, born at 31 weeks. So parasagittal plane and coronal plane. What is the most likely sequelae? How is this condition staged? So many are answering right. Yes, so it is a periventricular leukomalacia, spastic diplegia and cognitive defects are the major sequelae associated with this. And grading, we have grade one to four, um, which can be, uh, uh, you can uh, even, many of the books have uh, given this uh, grading, very, very important to know the grading, whether it comes to PVL or IVH, uh, fellows need to be familiar. So all these neurosonogram images can be shown in your examinations. So OSCEs are very, very important. So if you do it right, it can be like this uh, final of World Cup 2011. 
if something goes wrong it can be as bad as semi final 2019 so uh, make sure you hit sixers with oskis and uh, sound preparation and uh, good theory and practical knowledge is very very important for handling oskis and uh, the only these are all the slides that i have for now yes thank you thank you thank you so much dr abhishek so uh, i think it was a very very interesting and uh, informative session by both dr kiran and dr abhishek and uh, we are finishing well ahead of time <laughs> thanks to the i think second candidate who wasn't there uh, so thank you all for joining us and thanks to the examiners so we'll see you all next wednesday again thank you so much thank you everyone yeah thank you